I would be very curious to hear um, a little bit about the uprisings in March. I think um, this has been an event that was sort of shocking the world, shocking everybody. Uh, an uprising in Tibet where so many Tibetans were involved, uh, where everything was spreading throughout all the regions of Tibet, more or less. Um, so what was the trigger, in your opinion? Uh, what made it worse? What made it so, how can I say, so strong as a movement? And um, how do Tibetans think of it in consequence? I mean, what did the uprising change vis-a-vis -vis China, change vis-a-vis -vis the exile community? Yeah. Um, the uprising in Tibet came as a kind of a sh shock. Uh, surprise first and shock later because um, you know our friend Manfred he was with us while walking while taking this march to Tibet we started on the 10th of March and we were we didn't know what was going to happen in Tibet we were more worried about our march to Tibet which we were starting from Dharamshala at the same time the talk by His Holiness the Dalai Lama at the main temple in Dharamshala almost starting at the same time. His Holiness was to speak at 9 o'clock and after that he would go back to his palace and then we would take, take in charge of the whole stage and we would say, oh, okay, we are marching to Tibet and we would take everybody with us in a, you know, in, a, in a long march down to the town and from then the hundred marches would go. We were more worried about what His Holiness would say. Would he say, uh, you know, don't take this march? We were more worried about that. Um, and then, you know, His Holiness talk got over. We started the march. There were many Tibetans, especially elder Tibetans. They were crying while seeing us walking because they knew that it's going to be a long, uh, difficult walk. And um, maybe at the border, there may be more difficulties, especially at the Tibet border. Um, it's hugely emotional thing, you know. There were many, many uh, foreigners, uh, people from all over the world. They were with us, um, carrying placards from their own country, were from Germany, Finland, Austria, you know, France and Chile, and you know, many people. We were going on the march, and then when we reached Lower Dharamsala town, we we were worried again about the police. The Indian police might just come and just try to stop us. You know, it would be such an embarrassment because we are saying we were going to go to Tibet and if we were to, to be stopped right there in Dharamachal itself, you know. So we were worried about all these things. And then in the evening we suddenly heard this news that there was some disturbance in Tibet. Some Tibetans came out into the street and they protested. So um, it was a kind of a surprise on, on the first day. And on the second day, we heard that some people uh, have been arrested and you know, there's so much of tension. But tension was not really a news because there was already tension in Tibet ever since um, the awarding of the uh, Congressional Gold Medal to His Holiness um, in 2007, uh, in the month of uh, November. Huh? When that happened, there were already tension in Tibet. You know, the monks were ready to come out and protest. But we did not know that this protest, chain of protests that is going to happen all over Tibet, we didn't know. We were thinking that we were going to take this march throughout the uh, Olympic year. We will walk for six months, uh, for almost about 4,000 kilometers. We were to walk. And we were thinking maybe slowly the P Tibetans inside Tibet would get to know and they might uh, start to protest and there may be more Tibetans all over the world who would actually join us. We were thinking that it's going to be a long process of six months uh, creating this and then maybe around the Olympic times we would be at the border and then you know we would insist upon uh, allowing us getting into Tibet. But on the fourth day when the protests truly became big, that was on the 14th of March, we were shocked. Because by then, many people were already, uh, you know, shot to death in the streets of Lhasa. And we were getting all different news. And it had already by then became, uh, become big. And then it was spreading all over Tibet. And then um, we were arrested on the fourth day. And then, you know, 
we were uh, put in prison. 100 people, we were put in prison. And somehow, you know, in India, there is a way of always doing, uh, getting things done. We got smuggled a radio, a transistor radio, and a mobile phone um, inside, along with the... Um, uh, uh, oranges and apples and you know pineapple juice uh, we got them and then we were listening to the radio every day there are protests in you know, reports of protests from Kham, from Amdo and we were thinking my god this is happening all over Tibet things that that happened in 1959 that kind of uprising um, so this immediately got us connected and then uh, as, you know 10th March is commemoration of the 1959 uprising in Tibet. So it is commemorated everywhere, wherever the Tibetans are. And this year it happened. On the 10th of March, Tibetans all over the world protested, whether it be in New York or London or Jakarta or New Delhi and in Tibet. And when it started to grow big, we didn't understand. We didn't, we didn't know. And then there were a lot of um, tension among us that we didn't know what, what, what to do, how to react to it, it because it was a shocking thing for us. Um, and then people in outside world, uh, they became more desperate because now they have to act because people in Tibet were dying, they were being imprisoned. We have to act. And we, we got so disturbed in a way that we didn't know how to react. And that was a strange situation to be in. Um, and then, you know, I was in prison for 14 days because of the march, but the, uh, the, the march got uh, carried on with the second batch. So the march went on. But then, by then, the exiled government became restless. The exiled government started to create what is called the Solidarity Committee. And they came out. The exiled government, for the first time, became proactive. They started to organize protest rallies. I mean, it's never heard of. Can, cannot even imagine, because exile government was the one who used to stop us from protesting. They used to say that, oh, we are having a dialogue with China, so let us not have protests. And because the exile government did that, many of the elder generation Tibetans would say, oh, you are not listening to the, to the um, you know, uh, dictates of exile government, and therefore you are anti-Dalai Lama. You know, that kind of situation. But now, even the exile government became proactive. And there was so much of tension in the community People were going crazy. And when I was released from the prison, when I went back to Meklod Ganj, the whole landscape was changed. Meklod Ganj is a vibrant tourist state, tourist hill station. And then when, I'm, when I was going back to Meklod Ganj from the prison, I could see maybe the Tibetans there were not aware what they were doing. But I could see faces, photographs of dead people hanging from all window sides and walls. Everywhere you see pictures of dead people. It looked more like a battlefield where dead people, photographs of dead people were hung from the windows and doors. It was such a shocking landscape. Maybe Tibetans, they were who were living and doing these, maybe they were not aware what they were doing. But it's more like a battlefield. Maybe the scenario in Lhasa was something like that. But then Tibetans always, Tibetans in Meklodranj, they were naturally feeling that people dying in Tibet, their images should be shown. So they were doing that. And then there were pockets of demonstrations, you know, rampantly being organized all over, randomly going about. There's this group going up, the other group is coming from, from there. There's a group of nuns go, running down the street, and then some older people and, uh, from the region, uh, they, were, they were taking a walk, and some monks are sitting at the uh, temple saying prayers. Such crazy situation. So everything became chaotic. Yeah, and um, by then, you know, the phone, uh, the telephone links were still there. Uh, uh, an international issue, and a CNN, BBC, everybody was there in Dharamshala covering it. it, it